So it's about time for Apple to launch another bunch of very expensive bricks that look suspiciously similar to last year's very expensive bricks. But hey, if you can't afford one, don't stress about it. Because you don't need to empty your bank account these days to get a satisfying smartphone experience. A £300 budget can buy you a dependable blower that can play games, stream movies, take decent looking pics, and survive a full day until you're all tucked up with Teddy. And they're generally slimmer, lighter, and better looking than those iPhone slabs. Now, I've personally reviewed a lot of smartphones these past few months. Here's my pick of the best budget-friendly phones you can pick up for around £300. Now, first up, Xiaomi's very smart Redmi Note 12 5G recently hit Blighty with a stonking asking price of just £279. Here it is, sat alongside its slightly more expensive siblings, the Pro and the Pro Plus. The regular model is constructed from plastic rather than those more premium glass offerings, but I personally prefer the grease-resistant matte finish of the regular Note 12, especially in this here dashing forest green hue. And while it's not fully water resistant, it is at least IP53 splash resistant so it can handle the odd spot of inclement British weather, thank Christ. That screen is mere IPS tech, but it's still a proper stunner, not to mention a whopper at almost 6.7 inches. It's a full HD plus panel, so visuals are pretty crisp, with reasonably good contrast and a peak brightness that can cope with harsh outdoor lighting. On the audio front, like many of its budget brethren, you've got an actual 3.5mm headphone jack, hip hip huzzah, as well as dependable Bluetooth streaming, although sadly, unfortunately, it is only a mono speaker setup, no stereo action here. I don't know why I'm doing that, that looks so wrong. But to make up for that, the regular Redmi Note 12 is the only one of this trio to offer actual micro SD memory card support so you can expand the onboard storage, huzzah! The Snapdragon 4 Gen 1 chipset can handle even quite demanding gaming shenanigans like Genshin Impact as long as you bump down the graphics quality, complete with 5G support chucked in as well. Battery life is bloody good too, while the 48 megapixel Omnivision camera is fine for simple snaps, although it sucks in the dark and maxes out at Full HD video. So on the hardware front, pretty respectable all round, but when you have a squint at the software side of things, that's when everything gets a little bit limp. For one, the OS is pretty old stuff right now. We're into Android 13, but it's still lingering on Android 12. And Xiaomi isn't the fastest when it comes to updates, nor does it offer years of support for its budget-friendly smartphones, unlike many rivals such as Nokia and OnePlus. Now, if you're tempted by the Redmi Note 12, but you fancy something with a bit more clout, well, the Redmi Note 12 Pro model often dips under the £300 mark in Xiaomi's various sales. This upgrades that placky back to a proper premium glass design. And it's Gorilla Glass 5 as well, so this is a proper hardy bugger. Movie fans may appreciate the Pro more as that mighty screen is upgraded to a floor display panel with Dolby Vision support, while Xiaomi has also added a proper stereo speaker setup. However, the real upgrade here is the performance, which has been given a proper kick up the jacksy thanks to MediaTek's Dimensity 1080 chipset so gamers will enjoy a smoother experience. You've also got faster 67 watt battery charging, ideal for emergency power situations, plus a 50 meg main camera with optical image stabilization using Sony's dependable IMX766 sensor. Although it's not quite all fantastic news because the Pro model also acts as the micro SD expandability of the regular Redmi Note 12, Boo, Hiss, etc. And you can check out my full comparison between the regular Redmi Note 12, the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Plus right here on Techspert. On from that very same Xiaomi website, you can also grab yourself a Poco X5 smartphone for under £300. I haven't reviewed the standard Poco X5, only this here Poco X5 Pro, but most of the specs are the same and also incredibly similar to the older Poco X4 Pro. From the bright and poppy 6.67 inch Full HD AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh to the 5000mAh battery which delivers all day action even with loads of screen on time. And the Poco X5 is also powered by the same age and creaky Snapdragon 695 chipset as well but it's still good enough for smoothish everyday performance and a light bit of gaming. Otherwise, if you fancy yourself a bit more grunt than that, well, the Poco F4 is usually a cockroach's chuff just over 300 GBPs, and I'm still a big fan despite those slow-ass updates. This is an all-glass blower like the Note 12 Pro, and that design is rather smart, as long as you manage to keep that arse end clean. 
flip the F4 over and you'll find yourself gazing upon a mighty AMOLED screen that is both bright and bold. It's certainly a magnificent means to take in a depraved tentacle heavy anime or whatever other entertainment you happen to be into. And that is backed by a beefy if slightly uneven stereo speaker setup complete with Dolby Atmos tuning again. And gamers should still be satisfied with Qualcomm's aging but very capable Snapdragon 870 chipset. Might be getting on a bit but it still kicks ass just like Dolph Lundgren. Even the memory scoffing Genshin Impact is not a problem. No complaints on the battery front either, while the 64 meg primary camera can capture good looking pics and home movies with little fuss, as long as the lighting isn't too crap. Another one of my favourites at this sort of budget price and one which also just launched in 2023 is the OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite 5G. Crappy name for sure, but the specs and the user-friendly OxygenOS software makes it a more than strong rival to the likes of the Poco and the Redmi blowers. Let's start naturally with that bright lime design which is sure to attract a fair few glances or you can also get it in grey if you just hate life. That 6.72 inch Full HD screen is IPS tech, not OLED like some rivals, but it's still bright and reasonably poppy, with a 120Hz refresh rate for smooth sailing. No worries on the audio front either, you've got a beefy stereo speaker arrangement, plus an ultra loud 200% mode which is a bunch of marketing guff, but nevertheless means that you do get very loud sound when you need it. Oxygen OS squats happily on top of Android 13 and OnePlus has you covered with a couple of years of OS updates and three years of security patches. The Nord CE3 Lite is powered by the Snapdragon 695 once again so it can deal with some not too intensive gaming. And yeah, there's 5G support for getting online. But one of the best bits is that 5000 mAh battery which effortlessly delivers a full day of play plus 67 watts Super VOOC charging so you can juice it up again in just over half an hour. And OnePlus has also upgraded the camera tech over the previous generations. The CE3 Lite rocks a 108 meg Samsung HM6 sensor. And frankly, it's an absolute banger at this budget price point, complete with nine in one pixel binning to handle those pesky low light shots. And if your budget is sitting neatly around the 300 pound mark, well, Motorola is certainly another smartphone manufacturer well worth checking out. And one of its better efforts recently is the Moto G82. The highlight here is that gorgeous OLED screen. It's a proper 120Hz 10-bit eye pleaser, backed by stereo speakers for a merry old Netflix session. You've got yourself a big old 5000 mAh capacity battery, you've got expandable storage and hey, that performance is provided by Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 again. Popular lad. Not the beefiest chipset around so no one's going to be dribbling into their neck flesh thinking about all of that raw power but it is good enough for gaming on Call of Duty and PUBG and even Genshin Impact can run at an alright nip at the lowest graphic settings. And the Motorola G82's 50 megapixel main camera actually comes with built-in optical image stabilization and it is a pretty decent everyday snapper. That stabilization helps out in dimmer light and you get sharp colorful results the rest of the time. Unfortunately, just like Xiaomi, Motorola isn't exactly the swiftest when it comes to updates. An alternative option is the Motorola Edge 30 Neo, which can be grabbed at the time I shot this for a reduced price of 300 quids. While the Snapdragon 695 chipset is lamentably once again in charge here, you can game on the likes of Genshin on lower graphics settings, and the rest of the specs are pretty solid. That POLED display is a stunner, while the Neo also spunks out some respectable audio from those Dolby Atmos stereo speakers. The camera tech isn't great in low light admittedly, and can only shoot Full HD video, which is a bit poo, but it's not bad for this price point. More impressive is the nippy battery charge and chuck a USB cable into the Neo and it'll be powered up again in a jiffy. You can even charge the thing wirelessly as well which is still a feature which is pretty rare at this sort of price. But the highlight for me is the Edge 30 Neo's pleasingly hand friendly design as it's one of the most compact smartphones around. While that very peri design is a bit of a stunner that will certainly raise some eyebrows. Now another dependable source of brilliant budget blowers is Realme so if you've got just under 300 quid to spend on your next smartphone definitely have a squint at the Realme 9. This 4G model right here is an enjoyable all-round experience. It's powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 680 platform which can handle everyday shenanigans no worries. You might just need to be a little bit patient at times and you can't even get a light bit of gaming on the go when you can't be f***ed with work anymore. 
Games, movies and whatever else you get stuck into all look rather bloody marvellous on that 90Hz Super AMOLED display while battery life is as good as any other phones in this lineup. And while the 108 megapixel main camera does falter in more ambient light with focus field being the primary culprit, you do get some good looking snaps when those conditions aren't too testing. Just to confuse matters a wee bit, Realme has also launched a 5G model of the Realme 9 which is also available on the Realme UK website. It costs the same as the 4G model and it runs the Snapdragon 695 instead which has that built in 5G modem. And that sounds like a bit of a no-brainer, right? Why would you get the 4G model when the 5G model costs the same? But Realme has downgraded some of the specs as well in that 5G version. So for instance, they ripped out that gorgeous AMOLED panel from the 4G model and replaced it with a bog-standard IPS display. And then you've got the Realme 9 Pro, which sports similar specs to the Realme 9 5G, again with an IPS panel, but also they've upgraded the camera tech to something that's more capable in lesser light. Now, Samsung may be heavily pimping its bendy, foldy phones right now, but if you don't have a couple of Ks to drop on your new blower, well, you may be more swayed by the mid-range Galaxy A34. Now, the Samsung Galaxy A34 has an RRP of 399 quids, but at the time I shot this video, it seems to be on a permanent discount down to 299, which of course means that as soon as I publish this bloody video, it's going to go straight back up to 400 quid, isn't it? But if it does stay that cheap, it's a decent buy. For one, this 6.6 inch is IP67 water and dust resistant, which you'll struggle to find in any other 300 pun funds. And also Samsung is offering years of OS updates and software support with the Galaxy A34, unlike quite a lot of other manufacturers in this best budget phones roundup. Looking at you, Xiaomi and Motorola. Sammy's bright and poppy Super AMOLED screen is proper eye candy, while the stereo speakers are easy on your lugs. MediaTek's Dimensity 1080 is the brains of the operation, so games usually play with a respectable frame rate. And that 5000 mAh capacity battery keeps the Galaxy A34 chugging along until you dive under the duvet. Samsung has also packed this thing with the usual camera modes, and as long as you don't snap away in the dark, you'll generally get good results. Samsung's One UI launcher can be slightly divisive, though you're constantly being pushed to use Samsung's own services rather than Google's stuff in Android. And then the less said about Bigsby, the better. Oh, sorry, it's got some bile in my mouth. But overall, I would say that the Galaxy A34 is decent value for this price. The Nokia G60 5G is another respectable everyday smartphone for just 300 quid with the added bonus that it's mostly constructed from recycled materials, so making one doesn't tit up the planet as much as other phones. And with quite a few years of OS and security updates guaranteed as well, hopefully you won't have to hoi it in the bin and replace it with another one in double quick time. The Nokia G60 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 695, so once again this phone breezes through most tasks with a spring in its step and doesn't disintegrate if you try playing games either. That 6.58 inch screen is mere IPS tech sadly, but it's not a bad panel, still quite poppy, if not quite as bright as I would have liked. Battery life is as good as most of the phones in this best budget roundup where you get plenty of extra perks like expandable storage and an actual headphone jack. And while the Nokia G60 5G isn't a patch on the Pixel and quite a few others here for photography, it's still fine as long as the lighting isn't being a proper dick. Strong contrast and dim conditions are not this phone's friend. And that's almost it for our delightful little budget phone roundup, but before I go, I definitely want to give a shout out to the Honor Magic 5 Lite, which has dropped to just under 300 quid on many UK online retailers. If you're all about lux, you shallow bugger, well, the Magic 5 Lite will certainly deliver. This mid-range phone is a proper slender stunner to rival phones twice the price. Since on a split with Huawei, its phones now come packed to the tits with all of that hot googly action, including full Play Store access. While Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 unsurprisingly runs the show and once again provides enough punch for a stable-ish frame rate in fair like Genshin Impact. You got a good view of the action as well thanks to that generous 6.67 inch 120Hz OLED screen. And battery life is effing marvellous. You've got a 5,100 mAh capacity cell somehow stuffed inside of that slim and light chassis. And that combined with the Snapdragon 695, which is pretty energy efficient, means you'll get all day play. No worries, stretching at two full days as long as you don't go crazy. The 64 meg camera is all right, but you do only have a mono speaker setup, which is a real shame. Still at this price point, it's a solid all-rounder, if not one of the beefiest phones in this budget roundup. 
And I also want to give a big old shout out, as the kids possibly still say, to the IQ Neo 6, which again offers pretty sterling value for money at around the sort of £300 price point. This pretty shiny wee smartphone is a game and beast at this budget price, courtesy of the Snapdragon 870 chipset and a generous helping of 12 gigs of RAM, so you can smash your way through any Android title out there, no worries. Likewise, the battery life is good enough for all day play with 80 watt charging support if you do actually need a top up. The iQ camera setup is pretty good for shooting simple snaps, packing in Samsung's GW1P sensor. While rounding off those specs is a slick AMOLED screen with HDR10 Plus support and a stereo speaker setup. Overall, the iQ Neo 6 offers a lot and has only a few flaws blemishing its otherwise spotless record, such as the fact that it's missing micro SD memory card support and a headphone jack. So that right there is my pick of the best budget-friendly smartphones you can grab yourself for a budget of around 300 quid or under. But of course, there are discounts going on all over the internet all of the time. So if you've spotted any good bargains yourself, definitely clue us in in the comments down below. Got full reviews of pretty much all of these blows live right now on Techsperts. Please do go check those out if you're intrigued. Plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube bollocks, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.